Well, let's get some more analysis on this now from Professor Paul Christensen, a lithium expert with from battery experts at the University of Newcastle here in the UK. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Professor Christensen. Clearly, it's a very, very bad situation there in South Korea. But, um, perhaps we can come on to the safety questions in just a moment. But perhaps first you could help us understand just what we're dealing with here and tell us about really what these lithium batteries actually are and uh, this what's, I believe, called lithium-ion battery energy storage systems, or LIBES, which you're an expert in. You know, why is it so widely used now? Well, lithium-ion batteries store a very large amount of energy in a very small space. So that makes them great for storing renewable energy, for example. The sun doesn't always shine, wind doesn't always blow, but you need to feed into the grid. So you store the energy and then feed it in when it's needed. But it's a double-edged sword, this, this high energy density, as it's called. If that very high energy gets out in an uncontrolled fashion, then you're in trouble. And what you must understand is that with lithium-ion batteries, and I'm not sure if this was a lithium-ion or a lithium-metal primary battery fire, lithium-ion batteries, you get at least 500 litres per kilowatt hour of explosive and toxic gas when they go into thermal runaway. That means you've got that huge volume of gas inside the batteries, and when it gets out, it gets out at very high pressure. So if it ignites immediately, you get rocket-like flames. Hence, you can get very rapid spread of the fire. If it doesn't exact ignite immediately and ignite, ignition is delayed, then you can actually get what's called a vapor cloud explosion. Mm. And that, in many ways, is much more dangerous than fire. But this is unique. Essentially, if you put the fire out, you switch the, the hazard from fire to explosion because you essentially can't stop thermal runaway going from cell to cell. That's a very, very vivid image of the uh, rocket-like flames. And as an electrochemist yourself, you've consulted for government and advised businesses about the safety of these kind of batteries and the way they're stored. You know, how risky are they and what can be done to mitigate that? And what could have caused this kind of disaster that we've seen in South Korea? Well, the first thing, I think it would be wrong to speculate about this terrible disaster with this really large loss of life. Um, until we know more facts, I think we should not uh, make comment. But lithium-ion batteries are inherently, they're not unstable. I mean, basically, everybody has lithium batteries all over the place. There are billions in this world. And essentially, lithium-ion batteries don't commit suicide, okay? They are murdered. And that means there is a human factor, and I don't mean you know, malpractice, I mean it's a lack of understanding, a lack of training, a lack of education. Everybody, every single person that has anything to do with lithium-ion batteries, and that's basically everybody in the United Kingdom, should be trained in how to abuse, not to abuse them, how to use them, how to dispose of them safely. And that goes to first responders, people working in the manufacturing facilities, etc. Now, I, as I said, I cannot speculate what caused this terrible disaster, but in general, it's some form of abuse, either crushing, heating, overcharging, over-discharging, or it can be down to manufacturing defects introduced at the, at the very early stages. But as I've said, in most cases, it comes down to some form of human error. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And with increasing demand for lithium batteries in various applications, especially with electric vehicles, uh, what are the broader implications for safety in both manufacturing and in end use? Well, I've, I've, had, uh, I've worked with the, the Nissan battery plant, which is now AESC on uh, Weir side in, in the U UK, for about 14 or so years. And their safety record is excellent. Truly excellent. They fully understand the risks and hazards, and that's where the trick is. You must fully understand the risks and hazards. Now, what I should say is that electric cars it, are not killing people, okay? We've had, I think, about four deaths involving electric cars, and they were all down to the fact that people don't understand that these things accelerate very rapidly, and they've been killed in crashes. Nobody's been killed because of the batteries suddenly going up. In contrast, in the United Kingdom, we've had about 16 deaths in the last few years 
due to e-scooters, e-bikes, light electric vehicles. The London Fire Brigade are, I believe, dealing currently with a fire every single day caused by these e-scooters and e-bikes. And it's all ages are being essentially murdered by these devices, including young children. And this is an, a howling, absolutely despicable thing because every single one of those deaths, the injuries, every single family's life wrecked because of their house burning down could have been prevented by simple guidelines. And that's where the government should be coming in. And this is why education across the board is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very sobering message. Thank you very much indeed for sharing your thoughts with us today. That's Professor Paul Christensen from Newcastle University. Thanks so much.